Thank you for joining us. Today we'll be talking about the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard Version 3 and how that applies to visibility in keys and certificates. My name is Christine Drake and I am with Venify. We deliver next generation trust protection, securing keys and certificates. And with me, I have Gary Glover and Brandon Benson from Security Metrics that will be joining me today. Gary, how would you start off by introducing yourself? What? Okay, thanks. Um, I've been uh, a QSA now in this industry for about 10 years, pretty much from the very beginning, even before PCI DSS was a standard, and um, now kind of manage a, a group of QSAs and penetration test engineers here at Security Metrics. So I've been involved with the PCI DSS interpreting the standard and applying that in lots and lots of audits in lots of different cases uh, over the last um, big chunk of time. Okay, Brandon, can you introduce yourself as well? Sure. Um, my name is Brandon. I've been at QSA for approximately four years now. Um, I do a lot also helping companies interpret the standard, assessing their environments for uh, to see what controls are in place and what they need to fix on a, a regular basis. Deal a little bit with application assessments as well as point-to-point uh, -point encryption and dealing with those two other standards. So as I mentioned, today we're going to be covering visibility. It's the new visibility requirements in the payment card industry data security standard version 3. That came out in November of 2013. And most of the requirements are due by January 1st, 2015, which is coming up soon. And a few requirements are considered best practices until they're due for as requirements in June 2015. So focusing on the new visibility requirements, you can see that that's a theme through some of the changes they made in version 3. For example, in requirement 1, companies not only have to deliver their network diagrams, but they also have to show data flows. A PCI DSS. But I want to focus in on requirement 2.4 that requires an inventory of all system components in scope of the PCI DSS, and that's including keys and certificates. So from that viewpoint, Gary and Brandon, do you think that your customers know where all their keys and certificates are that are in scope of PCI DSS? I think it becomes a little more difficult with newer merchants or newer companies who are just starting to undergo the assessment process for the first time, and that those are areas that they haven't really focused on in the past. Yeah, I was going to say, often, you know, most QSAs will go through a, a process of discovery um, as you're preparing somebody for the first time or the, you know, the second time of an audit, you know, when they're going through that still some of the things are kind of new to people. Um, you know, we're real careful when we're preparing people and talking about the scope and learning about the data flows that are coming in and out of the network and which ones are, you know, encrypted and which ones are not and which, you know, really just kind of learning about all of that stuff. And and during that process, we help them, you know, identify where those keys are. Um, a lot of times we find that early on when somebody, when we're working with people, you know, they've got to get you know, they'll put one person on the phone trying to help us work with stuff, and then when we start asking questions, they go, "Yeah, I don't, I don't know where that is," and that person might have left the company that did that key process. So we're have to go figure that out, and we'll get back to you. I mean, that happens quite a lot, you know, going through these processes. So, you know, people, people know where they are after they go look for them, and after they know they're supposed to look for them. But, um, you know, like like Brandon was saying early on in the process, it's it's probably less they're less aware of where they are later on when they've gone through it, they're more aware of where they are. So it sounds like part of that's a, a manual or back and forth process as they hear from you more what they need to discover, they go out and they find it and it, it's not like it's one in scope process, um, but a back and forth till you really feel like you've covered. Yeah. That's a good, good way to say it. So yeah, a lot of times when we're working with people the first year, early on getting them prepared uh, for a full PCI DSS audit. Um, knowledge of data flows and, and how the keys are, keys made, digital keys or certificates or whatever are being used inside their network to, to protect an SSL stream or uh, some other sort of, um, you know, web traffic or whatever, um, internal traffic even. They may not 
know a lot of where some of those things are and, and part of the process that we go with them is to you know identify which person knows where they are get them on the phone talk to them through it identify the flows um, so the discovery process is maybe initially kind of a manual thing as we're just talking through through with them and, and helping them understand what the scope is I mean it's still the hardest part of any PCI audit is is determining the scope and making sure it's correct and, and helping the customer understand what that scope is currently and how it might be modified to minimize scope. So it's, it's kind of a, a process we go through initially with people. Later on, as they've gone through it a couple of times, you know, they'll know which keys need to be changed, which ones we're going to ask them about in, in subsequent years, et cetera. Okay, so it sounds like it's not one time you get everything in scope and you're done, but more of a back and forth process and a little bit of manual aspects on the part of the customer to, to make sure they're getting that entire in-scope need. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good way to say it. For visibility, is there anything else that you would add? Yeah, I think probably the only thing that I would like to say is is that it really is important for people to think about. Sometimes I think the PCI DSS in some ways and some QSAs may emphasize more the the keys that are being used to secure static credit card data, because those are the ones that people are talking about, and make sure you have good key management procedures around those. Um, and that's a pretty obvious one and one that can be easily focused on. Um, and, and it may be that sometimes you just kind of gloss over quickly the the any kind of um, SSL key or, or web keys and, and when those are being um, used and whether they're expiring, whether they're self-signed, whether there are all these different kind of things, um, often can be kind of the second thing we talk about with them. Um, I don't know, Brandon, have you got any other comments? Yeah, I, th- I would agree with that. Oftentimes we overlook SSL, uh, you know, and it has to do more a lot with um, how secure are the keys and what's the makeup of the keys and are we making sure we're, we're creating the right keys with the right Signature, signature checks and hash values for the keys, and, and I think that's that's an area that's kind of unknown for a lot of merchants on how to do that securely. And likewise, it's unknown for just a good number of security folks out in the industry. Uh, I think there are other keys in the environment that end up coming up that can be surprises, and we'll probably talk about those a little later. So. You are including the ones for SSL as part of that scope with your PCI audits. Yeah, you should be. If you look at requirement four specifically talks about um, encryption of data over open public networks via transmission, that's where we should be focusing more on the certificate type of keys and the keys used for transmitting data or data uh, encrypting data on the fly. Thanks, Brennan and Gary. That rounds us up for discussing visibility in the PCI DSS version 3 and how it pertains to keys and certificates. I know we're going to go on to talk about other podcast topics, but for those listening to this one, I want to remind you that Gary Glover and Brandon Benson both work for Security Metrics, which helps merchants with security and compliance. And that, of course, covers the PCI DSS. And I work with Venify. We offer next generation trust protection by securing keys and certificates. And we help with inventorying those keys and certificates and providing the visibility companies need to support their PCI DSS compliance.